Hi, everybody. This is Rosita coming to you from Belize. We are in late February, and we thought this would be a wonderful time because this is the anniversary of Miss Hortense's passing in February of 2010. So we're going to tell you uh, stories and legends, really by now they're legends, about Miss Hortense Robinson, our herbal midwife, who gave us so many of the techniques that we use in abdominal therapy during pregnancy, uh, preconception, conception, and then during delivery or birthing, and then afterwards. So let me just tell you a little bit about beloved Miss Hortense Robinson's background. Miss Hortense was born on Cozumel Island in 1922. Now I always thought that was incredibly significant because Cozumel Island is the original ancient home of Ischel, who you see right here, the Maya goddess of birthing, the earth goddess, the moon goddess, the goddess of fertility. She was a creator goddess. So she was a very, very important deity to the ancient Maya and still to this day. So that Miss Hortense was born on her island, I always thought was very karmic and important for all of us to remember. So she was born there and lived there until she was 13. She was the only girl of eight children. Therefore, her mother and father never sent her to school because she had to be home to do the laundry, cook the food, grind the corn, clean the beans. So like our mentor, Don Eligio, Ms. Hortense never went to school, never learned to read or write, but like Don Eligio, she became an intuitive genius. All the time that she was growing up, she hung out, played with Maya children on Cozumel. And all of these children were attached to homes that were attached to chicleros. Why were they in Cozumel Island? Because Hortense's father was a chiclero. Uh, people who collect chicle from the rubber tree, not the rubber tree, who, people who collect chicle from the zapadilla tree to send to industries to make chewing gum. And that went on until the 1940s until they developed in a um, synthetic chewing gum. So Ms. Hortense always told me that she played with Maya children when she was small and that all of these children were attached to men who were chicleros. So Hortense's mother and both grandmothers, maternal and paternal grandparents, grandmothers were midwives. Most of the children that she played with were also children and grandchildren of healers, snake doctors, because they were so important to provide these services for the chicleros. So Ms. Hortense assisted both of her grandmothers and her mothers from the time she was eight years old. And she and the other Maya children used to go out every day before they could play, before they were released out to play, they had to do their household chores. And part of those household chores was to collect medicinal plants for the healers, for the midwives and the snake doctors. So it's interesting that Ms. That, uh, Ms. Hortense knew a great deal of ancient Maya names for the common plants that we have right here in Belize. Did Miss Hortense ever take a life partner, Rosita? Yes, Miss Hortense had two husbands, and both of whom she left. They didn't leave her, she left them for uh, infidelity. So she had two life partners, and uh, from those two men, she had eight children, adopted 14. So she had 22 children in all, most of her life as a single mother, living in a two room house. Hortense always believed that when she worked with a woman who was pregnant and ready to birth, that the more sacrifices she personally made to assist and help the birthing mother, that the angels would smile, the Maya spirits would smile on her work more, and that her patient would get well more quickly. So when she delivered a baby, she would always go 
and visit nine days after the birth, which is why birthing uh, professionals are called midwives. She was the wife in the middle. She helped the woman through the birth. And then after the birth, she came every day for nine days. She did the laundry. She washed the dishes. She cared for the children. She cleaned the house. And she made sure that the mother stayed in bed and resting for a minimum of seven days. But every day for nine days, Hortense visited all of the women whose birthing she assisted, laundry, cooking. Right, in 1999, Hortense and I took another trip and this time she was invited to be the keynote speaker at the Art of Birthing Conference at the, what's the name of the place, Donna? The Learning Center. Yeah, the Learning Center in New York City. So I explained to Hortense what the invitation was all about. I said, they're going to ask you to be on the stage alone and there will be seven or 800 people in the audience and they want you to deliver the keynote speech. Well, what's a keynote? I said, well, it's the person who gives a talk that is pretty much based on the theme, the idea of the conference. And the idea of the conference is the art of birthing. So I think you have a whole lot to say. And she went, me can't do that. Me can't do that. And I said, you can, you can do this. You have a lot to share. And there's a lot that they could learn from your 50, 60 years experience as a herbal midwife. Many of them are midwives, but very few are herbal midwives. So we devised a plan that I would sit next to her. She would stand at the podium. I would sit next to her and she and I together would devise 10 or 12 um, questions that she would answer. If you could give her a question, she was eloquent. But just to talk, she didn't want to do it. So we had 10 or 12 questions. I asked her a question and she would answer it about her story, how she learned midwifery and her uh, most difficult birth, her easiest birth, her most unusual birth. And then after all of that, somebody uh, in the audience uh, asked what were her secrets? about birthing. And that's where we get all this fabulous birthing information. So Hortense explained to this group of 750 professionals, including Dr. Odant and all the other big names. What are the other big names in birthing? They were all, all there. We'll come up with those names, but it was like a star studded audience. People who were PhDs and in, in um, physical medicine and many, many uh, nurse midwives and also gynecologists. So Hortense gets up and then um, I ask her, what, how do you conduct a birth? So Hortense in all of her 65 years of midwifery, never lost a baby, never lost a woman. She said she had two stillbirths but no baby and no woman ever died in her care. And she lost count of how many births that she attended. When Horton said, I never did have a woman who tore and someone else said, well, how do you avoid it? And she gave all of those things of the oil, all the things that we just discussed. That's when she got a standing ovation and there were tears in the eyes of those gynecologists, those nurse midwives, tears. And after we finished, she was on stage for about 40 minutes. When we finished, I tell you, she was mobbed, mobbed by about a hundred people who wanted only to touch her. I thought that was so moving. They just wanted to put a hand on her. And she sat out in the uh, lobby of the, um, of this building, it was the uh, Medical Society in New York City building. She sat outside in the lobby and she was surrounded by young women for the next three hours. It was all we could do to get her away. We had to take her away for a break to go to the bathroom. She was followed into the bathroom by five or six women. So it was a, a beautiful experience for Hortense to have 
medical doctors, nurse practitioners, and midwives literally sitting at her feet. She really, really shone that day. And I think I'm done.